All right, my next guest is coming off a spectacular comeback win over Talos Slatis this past weekend at UFC 224 in Rio. He is Jack the Joker Hermanson. Jack, how's it going? Uh, it's very good. It's very good. Congratulations oh. uh, on a fantastic comeback win. Uh, before Thank we you get, very much. Before we get into the details of the fight and what happened, how are you feeling now? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm... Uh, just having uh, some pain because of my rib, but uh, besides that, I'm uh, I'm fine. And what was it diagnosed as? Was it a broken rib? Yeah, it's a not a broken rib, but a separated rib. So okay. basically, it's torn uh, off from uh, where it uh, is supposed to. You know, like your rib uh, is in two parts. One is uh, cartilage, and and one is bone. Yeah. And uh, where the bone is attached to the cartilage, the the rib was ripped up from that part. Ouch! 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 <laughs> at what point in at which point in the fight did you hurt your rib? Uh, in the end of the first round. Okay, and and it was a lot of grappling and submission attempts. I mean, how hard was it to have to defend the submissions and stay in the fight when you were in so much pain? Because it was evident. I mean, we can see in your face, of course. Yeah, it was extremely hard because, uh, you know, I knew what to do in uh, all the situations, but uh, the, the pain uh, kept me from doing it. So it was very frustrating and not be able to, to do what uh, I wanted. So, uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the pain uh, kind of uh, yeah, limited me. So uh, I just... Uh, try to, to survive and, and hope for an uh, um, opportunity to, to turn the fight. And what was going through your mind at that point? Because it really looked like giving up was the last option on your mind. Yeah, you know, um, I, I was very frustrated, but, you know, there was a small voice in my head saying that, you know, maybe you can get one opportunity, you know, like one opportunity. And I knew that if, if I got one, I, I was going to take it. So... Uh, I was just thinking, just stay in the fight, stay in the fight, stay in the fight. Did you? Did you I mean, it was very evident that, that you hurt your rib, but a lot of us were confused. Like watching, watching it, we thought maybe it was your leg, or do you think he knew automatically what was going on? No, he didn't knew where the injury was. Okay. You know, uh, immediately after the fight, he he asked me, "What did you injure?" I'm just okay. like my rib, and he he was just very nice and just sorry, bro. Right after I knocked him out, you know, okay. <laughs> so he's a very nice guy. Nice. And, and, and what did your corner tell you at the at the end of the first round or even at the end of the second round? Or were you afraid that the doctors might intervene and stop the fight if they noticed what was going on? Yeah, they, they asked about it, uh, um, you know, the doctor, but my corner was said, you know, he's fine, he's fine. And uh, um, I was, uh, you know, tr telling telling them to the doctors that I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right. Uh, but it was hard to keep that poker face, you know, during the rounds. Uh, so I was screaming like a lot more than you can hear from the from the sound on the <laughs> on the TV, you know. So uh, I was happy that he didn't uh, stop the fight there. Uh, I don't remember what my corner said between the first and second round, but between the uh, second and the third round, they said like, you know, Jack, there is no pain. It doesn't exist. You know, I know what you got, uh, that you have what it takes to to win this fight. Go in there and finish him. And that one, uh, that's when I am uh, throwing that flying knee there. And and of course, because we saw what happened with Raquel Pennington later that night, and it received a lot of criticism. Uh, you know, she, I I know it's not the same case because you didn't tell your your corner that you were done. But people were criticizing yeah. like she, she looked hurt and she looked out of it. But when you look at your situation, I mean, if your coaches tried to get you out of the fight, I mean, you ended up winning the fight. Do you see what I mean? So uh, yeah. when you look at that situation, do you, do you understand it more? Uh, I mean, not you personally. I mean, for the people who are criticizing, do you think your situation clarifies it more? Because maybe Raquel's corner, just because it was a title fight, they just wanted her uh, not to miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, you know, uh, I think that's... Uh, it should, of course, always be the fighter's choice what to do. I, I don't like when the corner intervene either if the fighter wants to stop the fight or or uh, when um, um, when you want to continue the fight. So, mm -hmm. but 
still i think that raquel was happier to to be finished than uh, than to you know if she would have stopped the fight in the corner said it was all right uh, she probably would regret that uh, after the fight you know and uh, so i think it, it probably was the best for her to continue anyways i see and, and in your fight i mean not only were you able to kind of fend off the submission attempts that because he was being very aggressive with with the grappling but you reversed the position and got the TKO. Were you surprised that you were able to turn things around like that? Yeah, I was uh, kind of surprised, you know. Uh, I was just, like, trying to survive. And then suddenly, you know, when he tried to pull that uh, guillotine uh, or that anaconda choke, like, he tried to pull guard. And when the grip uh, uh, break, you know, uh, broke, uh, that's, like, when I was... I'm ending up on top and uh, it takes a while for me to clear my head because I'm pretty dizzy from the choke. So uh, when I saw that I was on top, I'm just like, okay, this is my this is my time. I have my chance now and I just try to, to, to go aggressive from there. Yeah, and I was going to ask you about the submission attempts. Were any of them like uh, a matter of you just trying to get out or were they really tight? They were super close, all of them. <laughs> it's so close that I, it, it became dark, you know. It was like... Uh, yeah, it was uh, so close it, it, it can be. I was almost out of there. <laughs> that, that's incredible. That makes the whole thing even more incredible. And I know the, <laughs> I know the goal is to win and, and have as flawless of a performance as possible, but this will definitely go down in history books as one of the best comebacks. So does it feel extra special to be part of a moment like that, like a moment that I feel introduced your name to a lot more people? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, as you said, you know, like, as a fighter, you want to perform the be as best as you can, and I didn't feel like I did that. But at least uh, I got I got to show my sh show that I got some heart, and uh, I guess that's a good thing. So I'm happy with the fight. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm gonna it's gonna take a while before I can come back because of the injury. But that's how the game is. Yeah, and I was gonna ask you: Were you told how long you'll be sidelined? I mean, when do you think you'll be able to at least get back to training? Um, I'm not sure. It's gonna be step by step, you know. So I'm gonna be able to do something now, and then I'm gonna add small, you know, parts of the training uh, as the injury gets better. But I probably won't be able to wrestle and grapple properly in three months. So <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> and um, what is exactly the recovery process like? Is it uh, like what exactly are the doctors telling you to do in, right now? Uh, just just rest, you know. That's what they're telling me to do. So uh, maybe keep some some pressure on the on the ribs with the uh, uh, yeah, just to keep them from moving. Uh, but besides that, uh, you know, after a while you can uh, keep uh, you know getting the area a little bit warmer to get the blood flow up, and uh, so that can increase the healing. But uh, yeah, there's not much to do. <laughs> <laughs> right, I see. And and this is a big win as well for you, not just because of the comeback, but because Talisidis is, is a veteran. He was just ranked. He's a former title challenger. So a win over him, regardless, is big for your career. Yeah, uh, it, it's cool to, to fight against uh, such a well-known and uh, uh, opponent and a guy that has been fighting for the title and uh, I was the first to finish him with strikes and so there's a lot of a lot of good things uh, with this win absolutely and where do you feel like a win over latest puts you in the middleweight division you're four and two in the UFC now are you hoping for a ranked opponent next I know uh, you're gonna have to sit out and then maybe you're not exactly thinking about your next fight but there is a lot of positive that came out of this result because of who Talis is as well yeah, I hope so. I hope we're gonna get a good fight, and I would love the, a ranked opponent. But uh, you know, uh, I'm just on a one fight win streak, so we'll see where they who, who they put me against. But uh, you know, if there is any opportunities to to fight against the the top in the division, uh, I'm up for it. Awesome, and you've never fought in the U.S. before in your UFC career. I know you have before early in your career, but in the UFC, yeah. in Europe and South America, do you hope to fight in the U.S. someday uh, in the UFC? Is that something, or you're content? Uh, I know that South America is kind of like the enemy territory thing, but are you content fighting in Europe, or do you want to fight in the U.S.? No, it doesn't matter too much to me. You know, I would love yeah. to just travel around the world and fight everywhere. So, uh, but U.S. Uh, would uh, be very cool, so I'm up for that. 
Awesome. And have you heard about the UFC possibly going to Sweden at all uh, this year or, or soon? No, I haven't heard anything. They, they're talking about Denmark, so uh, if that you know happens a little bit later this year, I, uh, that would be nice, nice to do. But um, uh, I'm hoping they are coming back to Sweden at least uh, sometime the the next year, so 2019. Or but I'm not sure. Or maybe Norway. Yeah, we'll see. We have to legalize it here first. <laughs> ah, okay. Ah, that's a shame. Maybe yeah. you, could, you could help be part of the movement. Yeah, I'm trying to. Awesome, awesome. Well, Jack, wherever you end up fighting next, I'm sure many people, many more people will be tuning in. You've gained a ton of fans on this fantastic performance and comeback where you showed so much heart. I mean, now where you're telling me the details of the submission stuff, it's even that much more remarkable. So thank you so much for your time. I wish you a speedy recovery and hope to see you back in the Octagon soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for the good wishes and uh, thank you for having me.